My name is Andy Higginbottom, and I welcome you to the event which is the, entitled Britain's Dirty War Against the Tamil People, um, because it's to launch the pamphlet, both in English and in Tamil, here in London. The, I want to say two or three things before we start, just to give a little bit of context. The current uh, chapter of these publications really starts with the tribunals, uh, permanent People's Tribunals in Dublin in 2010 and then in Bremen in Germany in 2013, which were convened to investigate uh, from a non-state and independent perspective the crimes of the Sinhalese state against the Tamil people, uh, with obviously the focus on the massacres in 2009. But in particular, in the second tribunal in Bremen, the charge uh, became more explicitly one of genocide and the scope of the inquiry broadened to include the US and UK complicity with genocide. And at that tribunal we heard evidence from witnesses directly of course from uh, Elam Tamils from the north of the island, but we also heard witness uh, evidence from various uh, experts or investigators looking at this issue of complicity. And Phil Miller was one of those investigators looking at the complicity of Britain with the genocide. And I think that the work that he's pursued since then is a continuation involving quite a lot of primary research, uh, which he will explain in much more detail than I can, but essentially looking at the continuity of Britain's role uh, in the island of Sri Lanka, both before and since independence. Um, and that brings me to what I think is the first sort of major political question, which is, in fact, Britain was certainly not the only country, neither was just the US and Britain, the only countries involved in complicity in a genocide against the Tamils. It's our view that pretty much the whole of the U United Nations system was uh, one degree or another complicit with the genocide. And of course, uh, we can see that story is still unfolding. Um, so why concentrate on Britain? Well, there are actually three reasons. The first reason is, um, if you're British, then you should take responsibility for, in some sense, morally at least, for the crimes of your own state. Secondly, there are many, as we know, Tamil refugees here in Britain, and therefore the role of Britain is quite important in terms of the development of the political and social life of the community here. But I would say more important than both those probably is this whole question of Britain's responsibility as the former colonial power. And many uh, have argued that since uh, Britain was the former colonial power, then it should do things right by the Tamil people today. What uh, Phil's investigation shows and brings out uh, in great uh, detail, not all the elements of the picture are there, but many of them are there from his research, is that Britain is not only the former colonial power, it's been the continuing neo-colonial power. And that is to say the British in one sense never really left. And whenever the Sri Lankan state and the Sinhalese regime has come under any sense of threat whatsoever, the British have been willing to intervene, to support, to give assistance, and in, almost to the point of giving direction to the Sri Lankan state, which is normally an independent state, about how to deal with the insurgency, how to conduct its counterinsurgency. And the support from Britain has been pretty much full spectrum, from the, you know, the highest levels of organisation of the state, to the most detailed operations on the ground. And so the political consequences of this are really quite serious. Because if it's the case that Britain's responsibility as the former colonial power is to intervene to do things right, then that case completely falls apart. The evidence is that Britain has never stopped intervening. And in fact, Britain's interventions are indeed a major pattern of complicity with genocide. So actually what we should be demanding is that Britain should be stopping its intervention because it's been an obstacle 
to a freedom and justice for Elam Tamils. Um, what the evidence further uh, brings out, in my opinion, and in particular today, we welcome Am Walada, who writes on this from the perspective of Britain's role in the north of Ireland. And what we see in Phil's latest work is a connection between British counterinsurgency operations and the particular forms that it took in the period in the north of Ireland, which were translated and, tra and repackaged to some degree, but in essence were very similar. Uh, and the Sri Lankan armed forces took up much of the advice and training which Britain gave them from their experiences in the north of Ireland. And furthermore, um, what the framing of Phil's latest research, which will be published soon on the web, brings out is effectively a supplement to the pamphlet we're launching today, as this framing itself is completely in the context of colonialism. That the major architects of this type of policy were groomed by the British or they're part of the British apparatus in India. They developed their particular expertise in counterinsurgency in countries such as Malaya and Kenya and so on, transferred it to Ireland and then transferred again to the counterinsurgency in Sri Lanka. So, I mean, there's another major second uh, potential political issue to look at, which is if uh, what about the question of uniting oppressed peoples who have all suffered in one way or another from this type of um, counterinsurgency state. So I think that the, there's quite a lot um, at issue here. I, I actually think that what, um, I, what I hope, anyway, is that Phil's research uh, uh, pushes us to a paradigm shift, to use academic language, to frame the connection completely differently between Britain and Sri Lanka than the way it's normally framed in the mainstream media and by mainstream politicians. In other words, the question of complicity is being really filled out here. And it's not just an issue of one event, uh, atrocious and horrible as that was, but it's a consistent pattern over decades uh, of, of collaboration with human rights violations and so on. So, I mean, I think that the question is, up, uh, it opens up a whole new area of discussion, which I, I really do hope uh, that we get into later on this afternoon. I think uh, I'd like to thank the organisers of the event. Uh, we really appreciate having this venue here in SOAS. We'd like to thank our friends who all helped us to have this platform. And in particular, I think that the platform is extremely helpful to bring out these issues. Uh, I'll, I'll give, I don't think you all have printed agendas, so let me just read to you what the agenda is. There will be two sessions. Um, so our first speaker will be Phil, and our second speaker will be Anne Cadwallada, and she will speak to... Uh, the Lethal Alliance of the British and Death Squads in the north of Ireland, and then we'll have some discussion which will be fairly tightly focused on their presentations, then we'll take a break. And then under the uh, chairpersonship of my colleague, Dr Rachel Shorshiga, we'll have another panel. I'm very pleased to welcome uh, Dr Abriel Tikriti, who's written an excellent book about British policy in Darfur on Man, and we also have a, another speaker, Bashna Abayawadna, who will speak about his uh, writing, his rights and comments on the geostrategic aspects of the, the war in Sri Lanka. And we, we've, uh, we're expecting further guests as well, uh, that they are Tamils who have themselves directly experienced the product of all this policy, which are the operations of the Special Task Force in Sri Lanka. And that will come towards the end of the meeting. Um, so we're very hopeful that we'll be able to give them space. And then, of course, there will be more time for discussion. OK, so it's a fairly um, full agenda, and we plan to end the meeting shortly after 6 o'clock. OK, um, so very specifically now, my, my third um, task as chair, and it's a very pleasant one, is to introduce Phil, first of all. Um, the report uh, that he's going to talk to this afternoon has already been launched in English in Glasgow and Belfast. Um, it's not a Maoist strategy, but we are starting from uh, certain parts of the country moving towards the centre. 
Um, and the version in Tamil has already been launched in Germany. So, but this is the launch event here in London. And this is the first time that Phil's really talked about the, the content of the report to you and audience here in London. So, with, without further ado, I'd like you to welcome Phil Miller. 